Um, we didn't just eat uh, babies. Man, people that, uh, you know, are not in on the joke. That's a weird start. That's a weird start to the news right there. But uh, here we are, chat. Here we are. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Anyways. Let's get on with the news. What do you say? What do you say? Eh, it's kind of a slow Thursday. Uh, as you know, sometimes happens. Sometimes happens. Um, we watched some stuff during trailer tonight, uh, trailer time. Uh, about Battlefield. And now we're going to take a look at a blog they just posted. It's called a Battlefield Briefing. What we learned from the open beta. Our open beta was a special one. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, here are the specialists. We watched the video on this. They looked very OP. What is, I, I'm kind of interested in video games that are just straight up giving people the ability to have wall hacks so that they don't have to download wall hacks. Uh, because there's a character that has that. And they also have some other abilities where you can like hack a player, then it shows other players. There's ones where it'll show someone when they shoot you. There's one that has like a smart grenade. So when you throw the grenade, it like tracks and like, homes in on like a flying vehicle it's kind of cool um does it fit in battlefield let me know what you think in the comments because i think that's probably a bigger point of discussion do i personally think it fits in the battlefield uh that i'm used to no do i think it's going to ruin the game no i think it's just going to be a different game because of it we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll see uh what happens uh what we learned in the open beta we increased the number of tanks that you'll experience on Orbital. It's up from four to eight on PC, Xbox Series X, and PlayStation 5. Why? I don't want more tanks. Tanks fucking suck. You know who asked for more tanks? People that use tanks. You know who those people are? Not my friends. Don't like them. Don't like those tanks. I'm not into it. I'm not into it. We made changes to the movement, adding strafe input to sliding. That's kind of interesting. Adding the ability to vault on moving objects. That could be kind of funny. And uh, toning down jump spamming. Okay. A nearby grenade indicator has been added. Thank fuck. Entry and exit animations are now shorter with some being removed entirely. Okay. Elevator's been fixed so you see less funky behaviors with doors. You know, the PR term there is less funky behaviors. I would have gone with so the doors actually seem like a functioning aspect of our video game because beforehand they were utterly and completely broken and nonsensical at the same time. But there you go. There you go. Maybe I'm a little too harsh for PR. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's much more beyond that. But if you want to learn about that, you need to subscribe to Hit Me JP with Prime because ads are about to run for three minutes and you'll miss him reading the blogs, next three paragraphs, if you don't subscribe now. Strange. It's weird that they gave me a shout out in the blog post. First, we can test how our technical systems behave in the wild, bringing forward with us the learnings we had from our technical play test in August to ensure the solutions we developed were successfully applied in the real world. Okay. All right. Secondly, we get to compare the behaviors of how we see things behaving internally with how they behave in the hands of you, the players. There's a lot of just like PR babble. 
Finally, an open beta on the scale provides us with the opportunity to directly hear from you on how the game feels. There's plenty of good discussion between uh, covering some of our thoughts on the feedback that we've read and seen, shared, and discussed uh, across various Battlefield communities. Interesting. Wait, what is this? An overview of vehicle versus infantry hotspots across the entirety of orb or orbital. Click to see in high resolutions. Is this infantry? I don't know what this is. This is just like a weird image. The image is entitled BF blog image beta recap falling parachute full res PNG. Is this where people parachuted? Well, I know it's a heat map chat, but I don't understand what the fuck I'm looking at right here. I know this is the tower. Is this where parachutes were deployed? That's weird. That's a weird one. Now this one is the vehicle versus infantry full res heat map. That's kind of cool. People really liked the tower and they loved fighting and like no one enjoyed going into the forest. I actually thought the forest was like part of the, the best part of the map in terms of fighting. I enjoyed fighting in the forest. I did spawn here a lot, though, and jump off to go into the forest. The tower was a horrible spawn point. Incorrect. You'd spawn at the tower to jump off the tower immediately. Immediately. That's that's interesting, though. Uh, performance. Bibbidi blop. Shibop babop. Boo doop boo doop boo boo. Okay. They just said some stuff about performance in the game and yeah. We're getting a mountain of valuable data about the performance of our servers. Servers are gonna fucking crash. Bot heavy servers were too prevalent across the first few hours for many players, correct? Too many of you were being dropped into games that weren't being successfully backfilled. Left you fighting against bots, correct? I feel like, though, as that uh, beta progressed onwards, it, it happened less and less, so that's good. And I think they said that as, as such. Uh, user interface, stepping aside from our review of how the technology of the game performed, let's get into the experience side of the open beta. Talking about systems uh, that you were interacting with. Our user interface in the open beta wasn't fully representative of our final experience. It was missing some essential components, some of which we disabled to remove uh, debilitating and now resolved bugs, and some of which we use, uh, we chose to continue to focus work on for launch uh, when we branched in August. Big map, as we refer to it internally, was disabled. Oh, thank fuck. Thank God. Yeah, that was huge for me because I would press like M and nothing would happen. So good, good to see that. Thank God. Uh, we would pull this up during live gameplay by pressing the view slash touchpad controller on console or M on PC. It provides to me. Oh yeah, yeah, I know how map works. What is this? Coma Rose was also absent from the open beta. It's very much present in our build today. This is a staple of in-game communications for battlefields. The ability to hold a single button and use quick action to give you an indication of what you're at and what you need. This is how it looks today. Yeah, so that's that's what we watched the trailer of already. It has all the stuff that you would expect. It's good stuff. Uh, we want to... In addition to our ping system, the ability to quick tap and input to give contextual indicators, we have some great tools at hand uh, to hand you over at launch. Ping wasn't exactly working as well as we would have liked during the open beta, but at launch, you can expect it to function more responsibly when you're pinging locations, assets, and enemy soldiers. Good. Did we watch this video? 
I don't think we watched this video. It looks similar though. With score events visible on the right side of the screen into its final state, centrally beneath the crosshair, provides you with more traditional kill confirmed dialogue that affirms who you've killed, healed, and helped across the experience, and now it's helping you to show your rewards you're getting for doing so. Good. Oh, okay, so it's got worldwide killed feed here, or maybe squad kill feed here. Okay. Good. There are multiple scoring events related to transport uh, assist, spawn report, resupply, and hill support. They were absent in the open beta field. They're in our full game. Good. Let's perform more significant performances passed on colorblind settings. Good. Special note to close out this section on the UI. Let's talk about critical alert messaging, which appears at key moments on top of the screen. We hear you. It's too big. We reduced it in size, lowering the frequency of the alerts. I'll we'll continue to take feedback on you all uh, from when uh, you get hands on the full game. Great. These are all very good things so far. Let's talk loadouts. In the open beta, we unlocked more of the sandbox that is experienced when you first start playing the game. is an important way of testing behavior of certain gadgets in a live environment. For the first four to six hours of the full game, expect to be working with a reduced array of gadgets for your open gadget slot uh, with you. With your journey through the ranks, slowly introducing new ones for your loadout. The traditional experience of Battlefield game where classes fulfill traditional roles is an experience that you graduate out of the first 10 levels. Your specialist will have the options to choose from medical crate, ammo crate, the recoilless M5 launcher, and or repair tool as starting gadgets and enable experience of playing in ways that allow players to feel the benefit of playing in more supportive roles. Huh. Loadouts are fully customizable in the open beta. You're set up with four loadouts that mirror the traditional class structure of assault medic support and recon. Uh, they'll be available. They'll be there too at launch uh, for all players as default, but there's actually a much bigger suite of tools available to help you speed up the act of switching to different setups and let you get right back into the action. What is this? We didn't watch this. Oh, good. So you can pull this up before you even spawn. Holy shit, that's a lot of scopes. Oh, so you can have... Oh, shit. Okay. That's very good. I actually really like that. So you can have like two kits on the plus menu. That's good. I like that. That's a good change. Cool. Moving away from loadout, let's talk squad composition. We hear you on this topic. Squad comp matters. Uh, you each experience four of the 10 specialists coming to Battlefield 2042 at launch. So we can appreciate the opening. Uh, sorry, the experiencing the full diversity of your gameplay. Nor variety of customization wasn't accessible uh, for you during the beta. I've just now realized the fact that there's 10 specialists. The reason they're doing specialist is so they can continue to pump out from a marketing aspect, just like we watched the character reveal of a new Apex character today, and we'll do so again on the 25th. They're going to do that same shit with Battlefield. It's smart. I get it. I don't know if it necessarily makes sense uh, for Battlefield, but we'll see. We'll see. In Hazard Zone, we're keeping things tight and deliberate on squad comp. Specialist selection will be unique, and we're not running with duplicate inside the squad. Ah. In All Out Warfare, we're not using the same restrictions we've been learning since Battlefield 1942 that our game is just isn't fun. We can't play to your strengths. And there's been lots of iteration done in the areas of our games across the franchise's history. In Battlefield 2042, you'll enjoy the freedom of moving between specialists and loadouts uh, you need to support the squad. And there are parts of the experience that we have in our builds today that helps reinforce that. First, there's our insertion flow. Your squad mates will be shown your player cards where you've got the chance to personalize and flare it off to show some of your play styles. I mean, I'm just going to choose the stupidest ones and meme shit. Uh, come on now. There, then there's the additional time in pre-round, which was disabled during the open beta uh, to chat and make further changes to your squad comp so that you can hit the ground running straight out of the gates. All that's going to be used for is... I like Battlefield! Whoa! 
No one's going to be like, oh, I'm sniping. Uh, better still, we're celebrating our strongest players and team at the end of the round on our end of exp end of round flow. I missed this video as well. But this is only in the squad, right? This isn't for the uh, for the entire team. Oh, squad. Okay, so it shows you where your squad placed. Okay. Cool. Wait, they played an 18 hour long match? What the fuck? Interesting. Uh, burr, 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 burr. Is there a, do they talk about a like full on map score system? We're also adjusting the tent that applies to enemy soldiers and may change the UI so that you're inside of 10 meters. An icon is now present above the heads of enemy soldiers, provided they won't be otherwise included by any terrain or map objects. Similarly, we're also working to ensure the friendly icons will no longer be occluded through walls within 40 meters to address instances of our systems failing to represent a player as a friendly teammate before they've entered your field of view. Got it. Cross-platform invites for squatting up will otherwise be in at launch. So they didn't they didn't talk about a scoreboard. I don't think. Score board. No, they didn't. Kind of sucks. They legit want to drop the total leaderboard. I just that just seems stupid to me. Like what the fuck's the point if I'm not number one on the server? You know? If I'm number one in my squad, that's because I'm playing with Jericho, Gassy, and Co. And they're all terrible. So, of course. Like, I mean, duh. Like, what, what the fuck are we doing here? I got to be in the top of the, the entire team. <sighs> Anyways, what else do we got? We got new two. We got new cards for the Xbox Series X and S. Uh, when it comes to expansion cards, new two terabyte and five twelve gigabyte Seagate storage expansion cards for the Xbox Series X and S. Uh, the five twelve is one hundred and forty dollars, and the two terabyte is four hundred dollars. Uh, the five twelve will launch mid November, and the two terabyte will launch in early December for that type of stuff. Uh, I will say, as someone who has a one terabyte one, because uh, Microsoft sent me one when they sent me my Xbox Series X, it's really easy to install it. You you just plug it in. The PlayStation is uh, a little bit more involved. Not difficult by any means, but the Xbox one, you just plug it in and you're good to go. That's all you do. PlayStation, a little bit more involved, but not hard. So that's cool. I wonder if they'll be sending me a two terabyte one. We'll see. It's a memory card from PS2. Uh, pretty much. I mean, it's, it's, I have one right over there. It's on the back of my, uh, it's very simple. You just plug it in. Just plug it in. It's very simple. That's all you do. Plug it in. Uh, hey, the House of Ashes review thread is out. That game comes out tomorrow. I didn't realize that was the case. Uh, with 40 reviews, it is sitting at a 74% average with 51% recommended. Have these games reviewed well in the past? I'm not really even sure if the other ones reviewed well. I think the first one did. I don't know if the other ones did. They're all weaker than Until Dawn. Okay. That makes sense. Let's read some headlines here. Destructoid gives it a 6 out of 10. 
As much as I feel like this series is stuck in the shadow of Until Dawn for a large part of the audience, collectively, the Dark Pictures Anthology is becoming something memorable in its own right. I'll keep enjoying these games as long as I can, House of Ashes included. Damn, and he gave it a 6 out of 10? Crazy. Crazy. Eurogamer says, Knife Edge Thrills delivered by a compelling cast for a truly impressive horror. It's recommended. Game Informer gives it a 7.5 out of 10. And they say House of Ashes doesn't always land, but it can be an exciting, quote, check your brain at the door thriller. It's largely toothless scares will disappoint horror fanatics while inviting a broader audience. Where's IGN? Here we go. IGN, wait for it. It's an 8 out of 10. Dark Pictures Anthology, House of Ashes, is Supermassive's best horror game since Until Dawn made it famous. Okay. Okay. Uh, IGN Middle East gave it a 5 point out of 5.8 out of 10. The new installment in the series got its horror stripped down to a level that probably won't make you hesitate to play it alone at night. It will get you through a story that escalated fast to uncover a big lore uh, that was weirdly shortened to end the story. Even though it was fun sometimes, House of Ashes is a broken mirror of what it could have been. Okay. PC Gamer gives it an 80 out of 100. Great monsters, stunning location, and a quality mystery makes this one of Supermassive's best. So it seems kind of, uh, you know, it seems fine, ultimately. Uh, what was the highest score? This man gave it a, or this this stream, uh, reviewer, streamer, whatever. I don't know who reviewed it. Uh, WCC F Tech gave it a 9 out of 10. The Dark Pictures Anthology House of Ashes is easily the best of the series so far. There are clear improvements in gameplay, such as difficulty options and complex control over the camera, which help pushes this forward. The writing also takes strides forward with an excellent cast of characters, more realistic writing, and a satisfying narrative throughout. And the already exceptional abilities of supermassive games at building atmosphere, and you have the recipe for, uh, oh, sorry, add, not and. Any of the recipe for a great game, something that I firmly believe House of Ashes is. Okay. All right. Seems seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. What else do we got in news? Oh, shit. We missed a Gran Turismo 7 trailer. Do they just like fuck cars in this trailer? What is going on here? Yep. Wow, they're just like fucking getting all up in that cussy. That's crazy. It's weird that PlayStation would allow them to put that out. Uh, so Kotaku put out a uh, story... It says, uh, Masahiro Sakurai explains how Sora came to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And I kind of want to, uh, oh, it was in his weekly Famitsu column. I'd love to hear about this. Uh, as I think some can imagine the barriers for Sora entering the battle were quite high, he writes. Even though players' expectations were great, I honestly thought it was impossible. By chance, I met a higher up at Disney at an award show, Sakurai writes in his column. I talked about how I'd like Sora to join the battle in Smash Bros, and I was told that they also thought it would be good if he was able to join the battle. What a surprise. Uh, after the chance meeting, Disney, Square Enix, and Nintendo all entered into long discussions about bringing Sora to Smash Bros, and in the end, Sakurai got the okay. Uh, quote, supervision from both Disney and Square Enix is required for anything that Sora does in Smash Bros, explained Sakurai. It did feel like the various hurdles were high, and in reality, there were various roles in place for development to go forward. I mean, he didn't, okay. So we didn't really get the full story. Yeah, it's a pretty boring story. It's upsetting. What else do we have here? Oh, there's a new Grounded trailer. Uh, it's 
called they put out a blog post that grounded just got hotter and hazier what are they adding oh it's the new sandbox biome uh there's brand new shovel there's treasure in the sand uh, they say, although the treasure isn't, isn't the only thing buried in this area, as players will now come face to face with one of the strongest foes yet, the ant lion. These new creatures love eating two things in this world, ants and you. Be prepared. Fuck that. Speaking of ants, the recently uh, added Black Ant Hill is now open for players to enter. The Ant Hill is the first mega dungeon players can explore as they fight their way through the halls of the Forgotten Lab. Below, players will also have the opportunity to meet up with the first mini boss in the game. That is, if they can find proper clearance to set up said meeting. I feel like they've added so much to this game since I uh, originally touched it. And I'm never going back to it because it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> it's scary as shit. I don't need that. You kidding me? Yes, it's still in early access. Um, And that is like generally the news of the day. We'll do a little uh, key chat alerts here if you guys have anything to share. We got one right here coming from Khalif. Uh, Windows 11 has an update that fixes gaming performance issues as uh, bleepingcomputer.com is reporting. Great. Uh, it is fixing 64 issues including AMD CPU performance and gaming issues. Oh, they install an Intel CPU in your uh, computer. That's that's a cool software update. It's great. Uh, yeah, then necessarily, oh, it does have all of them listed. Holy shit. So yeah, if you're running Windows 11, uh, definitely take the KB56746 update. All right. Go ahead and grab that. You'll get a brand new CPU with it. Uh, let me just, uh, you know, let me got to hit this button here real quick. You know, we got to do this right here. We got to. This stream is not held accountable for any falsities put forth by person or persons on the channel. It is for entertainment purposes only. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, anything else, chat? Terraria right, posted a teaser collaboration of some sort with Don't Starve. Literally GIF. So it's not worth showing in my opinion. All right. Thank you, Dark Karos. Thank you for that. I don't think there's any... What the fuck? Now, chat. I've seen some anime trailers before. But I did not see this one today. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. Extreme gameplay trailer. What the hell is that? God damn, that game looks huge. Big fucking game. Big. Massive. Anything else, chat? Anything else? Are we calling it? Going once. Going twice. Forts 5 is now available for preload. Wait, really? That's like... How big is that game? Is it going to take 10 days to fucking preload? What the fuck? That's wild. It's a hundred gigs. Giggity. 
Wait, can we? Hold on, chat. I need you guys to help spread something, okay? I need you to help spread something. If a game is a very large game and it's very high in gigabytes when it comes to the data, can we start saying that that game is giggity? Call of Duty, very giggity. It's huge. Spread it around. Let's get it trending. Okay, let's make it happen. You guys are all influencers. You've been, you know, decreed an influencer by me, a fellow influencer. Let's make it happen. Okay, here we go. Good luck, everyone. Godspeed. That's going to do it for JPNN today. Thank you so much for watching. We will be back tomorrow. And then we got that clip show Saturday. We also have POE tomorrow, which we're going to be choosing a build right after we finish recording this on the stream. So if you want to watch that uh, VOD, you can. Feel free to come on over to Twitch, check out the VOD. Or you just tune in tomorrow to see that we've chosen Toxic Rain as our league starter. <sighs> for now, we're out of here. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.